Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Henoch Shonlin Purpura, or HSP. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash HSP, or in the rheumatology section of the Zero to Finals Pediatrics book. So let's jump straight in. Henoch Shonlin Purpura, or HSP, is an IgA vasculitis that presents with a purpuric rash affecting the lower limbs and buttocks in children. Inflammation occurs in the affected organs due to IgA or immunoglobulin A deposits in the blood vessels. It affects the skin, kidneys and the gastrointestinal tract. The condition is often triggered by an upper airway infection or gastroenteritis prior to the development of the HSP. It's most common in children under the age of 10 years. The four classic features to remember are purpura, which occur in 100% of children, joint pain, which occurs in 75% of children, abdominal pain, which occurs in 50% of children, and kidney impairment, which occurs in 50% of children who have the condition. The rash is caused by inflammation and leaking of blood from small vessels under the skin, forming purpura. Purpura are red-purple lumps under the skin that contain blood. These are non-blanching meaning that HSP is a cause of a non-blanching rash. Let's talk in more detail about the features. Purpura are seen in practically 100% of patients with HSP. They are red-purple in colour and are palpable under the skin. They typically start on the legs and spread upwards to the buttocks. They can also affect the arms and the trunk. In severe cases, skin ulceration and necrosis can develop. 75% of patients with HSP develop arthralgia or arthritis, mostly affecting the knees and ankles. The joints can become swollen and painful with reduced range of movement. Abdominal pain is indicative of gastrointestinal involvement. This affects around 50% of patients with HSP. In severe cases, it can lead to gastrointestinal hemorrhage, intersusception, and bowel infarction. HSP affects the kidneys in around 50% of patients, causing an IgA nephritis. This is sometimes referred to as HSP nephritis. This can lead to microscopic or macroscopic hematuria with invisible or visible blood in the urine and also proteinuria where there's protein in the urine. If there are more than two pluses of protein on a urine dipstick test, the child has developed nephrotic syndrome and will have some degree of oedema. Let's talk about diagnosis. The most important initial step is to exclude other serious pathology with any child who's presenting with a non-blanching rash. And these are serious conditions such as meningococcal septicemia and leukemia. It's worth remembering that idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura and hemolytic uremic syndrome are also differential diagnoses for a non-blanching rash. Key investigations to exclude other pathology and assess for organ involvement include a full blood count and blood film for thrombocytopenia, sepsis and leukemia, a renal profile for kidney involvement, serum albumin for nephrotic syndrome, CRP for sepsis, blood cultures for sepsis, urine dipstick for proteinuria, 
a urine protein creatinine ratio to quantify the proteinuria, and a blood pressure to check for hypertension. There are many different sets of criteria for diagnosing HSP, the most recent being from the Eulah Printo Press Criteria from 2010. These criteria require the patients to have palpable purpura, not petechiae, plus at least one of diffuse abdominal pain, arthritis or arthralgia, IgA deposits on histology, which involves a biopsy, or proteinuria or hematuria. Let's talk about management. Management is supportive with simple analgesia, rest and proper hydration. The use of steroids is debatable, with evidence suggesting they may shorten the duration of the illness but not affect the long-term outcome or rate of reoccurrence. Steroids may be considered by specialist doctors in patients with severe gastrointestinal pain or renal involvement. It's important that patients with HSP are monitored closely while the illness is active. They need close monitoring with repeated urine dipstick to monitor for renal impairment and blood pressure to monitor for hypertension. Finally, let's talk about the prognosis. Abdominal pain usually settles within a few days. Patients without kidney involvement can expect a full recovery within four to six weeks. A third of patients will have a recurrence of the disease within six months. And a very small proportion of patients will develop end-stage renal failure. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to follow the channel and find out as more videos come out. You can also find written notes with illustrations on the Zero to Finals website at zerodefinals.com. And on the website, you can also find a podcast that can help you learn on the go, questions to test your knowledge, and the Zero to Finals books. Follow the link in the description to pick up a copy of the Zero to Finals medicine book. It contains detailed and concise notes on 10 specialties in medicine, and it's designed specifically to contain the key facts and guidelines you need to know for your medical exams, with mnemonics and tom tips to help you learn exactly what you need to know for your exams, without all the hassle. Follow the links to find out more.